it's the best way people have figured out to make an economy reasonably efficient, is the market consumer demand determines what gets made. Um, and you know, you don't find and yourself uh, like under Soviet Russia producing things there was no demand for and it was a waste of people's effort and energy. Uh, but there's another side to the market. They're, they're very good at the allocative function of what gets made, what services are offered. They respond to the demand for them. But uh, left to themselves, markets distribute incomes in response to supply and demand. Wages and salaries fluctuate in response to the relative supply of workers and the demand for the product or service produced. Factors that are largely independent of the merits of the workers. It's not as though people who make a lot of money are, are obviously the most meritorious workers. The market doesn't guarantee that. Simple example. Um, take a simple example. Some guy who is a second-rate or third-rate guitarist may be a tremendously popular uh, a rock concert fan. You know, women throw themselves at him, and uh, he makes two million dollars a year or ten million dollars a year. Who knows what? He's really a big fan. He's a lousy guitar player, but he's really popular. In the same town, living across the street, or you know, probably a little more like a different part of town, maybe the best flutist in California, who works, you know, teaches lessons to make make a living, plays for the symphony orchestra for peanuts, but is extremely talented and does, you know, a beautiful job and tries very hard. So she's, well, in terms of merit, she or he is more meritorious than he is, but he's much more popular, so he makes a lot of money. That's the way the market works. It doesn't reward talent if people don't want that talent. They're out of luck. Uh, but uh, and I'm not saying that's wrong for the market, but it's a mistake to say the market always rewards merit in terms of you know, skill and effort and talent. Uh, lots of people who don't make much money are very skilled and talented at what they do, but uh, there's no massive public demand for it, so you're not walking away as a millionaire or a multimillionaire. So <clears throat> the market good at allocation of what gets made and what services are provided, not so good at distribu distribution. It doesn't automatically reward merit. Um, so um, to ensure social justice, liberals see it as empirically necessary to use the tax system to redistribute funds from the more to the less well-off, to ensure the liberty of self-determination is available to all. The person who is excellent flutist uh, should still have a chance to live a decent life, not live on peanuts and teaching little brats for pennies. Uh, the, you know, maybe she can't even afford to raise a family. Uh, markets don't by themselves automatically do this. The, uh, so to capture the uh, positive liberty, the self-determination part, and the market's not act automatically doing this, liberals don't have a problem redistributing money from the more well-off to the less well-off to some degree, there have to be restraints on it, um, to guarantee people a minimally decent life and a uh, chance to live a rewarding life. The markets can drive people into utter poverty, totally unregulated. <clears throat> Look what's happening, why is all these industry's gone to China because you can pay 20 cents an hour to have somebody assemble your electronic product and not worry about unions or anything else and ship it back for you know, a handsome self sale price. That market transaction is not rewarding those workers proportional to their merit. It's very tedious work. I'm sure it's maddening. They work long hours under insufferable conditions, sweatshop labor, that kind of thing. Um, it's hardly rewarding those workers proportional to their merits. So liberals would certainly be opposed to that. Uh, <clears throat> finally, there are other problems with libertarianism, as there are problems with liberalism, I'm not saying that, uh, that have gone unmentioned here. Most notably, there's deafening silence about the vital role of public goods and the public interest in any well-run state. Uh, it's not clear to me how a hardline uh, libertarian uh, and conservatives that go along with it would finance things like national parks, national forests, um, museums, public works, pro um, water works, you know, massive infrastructure projects, big dams, and so on. They pretty much have to be financed if they're financed alone at all by the government, but they are public goods. They're supposed to benefit everybody. <clears throat> um, the, uh, I do need to say a few words about the dominant role of the unregulated free marketplace in the libertarian's philosophy in modern times, which uh, 
uh, have seen the rise of these mega corporations. It would not be an exaggeration to say that really sovereign power in their ideal world is the, is the market itself, not the state. That's the big worry, I think, for anybody, the growing power of multinationals to write the rules and uh, do our governing for us. <coughs> There's a way of correcting for that, we'll come back to that. <coughs> for libertarians, the state is pretty much reduced to a caretaker role that enforces private rights. Antitrust regulation is ruled out by their nearly sacred regard for property and contract rights. Maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe there are some good libertarian arguments for antitrust. I haven't seen them. But it's an absolute essential, it seems to me, in our modern society. To, uh, it's absurd to have these banks that are too big to fail and still say you've got a free market. That's, that's the opposite of what a free market is. So the major players in the market, the China mega, corpor mega corporations, will set the agenda for the whole country as they are already on the way to doing currently. If allowed to continue, public education, both K-12 and university level, will go by the boards, despite our having had the best in the world in just a generation or two ago. Public service will disappear as a career option. Huge mass media corporations, having captured radio and TV some time ago, will come the internet. There's a huge force to do that. Um, watch out for that one. They're itching. Well, groups like Verizon and um, AT&T would love to control the internet and dictate thereby much of its content, or at least limit access to its content to major advertisers. You have to pay more to get the good stuff. Huge mass media corporations, well, sorry, an unregulated banking industry will go through endless cycles of boom and bust, such as we are currently experiencing. The effort to regulate the banking industry so far pretty much seems to be uh, a failed effort. They haven't corrected the problem. Agribusiness will drive off what is left of the family farm, and with it, honest long-range stewardship of the land. Without a state capable of governing in the public interest, the land, air, and water will be polluted to unsustainable levels. Workers will suffer greater reduced rights in the workplace, and consumers will not know the hazards of what they're buying until it is too late. Social security will disappear, and effective national health care system will never come to be. There will be a few winners in this dystopia, but a vast majority of us will be losers. You may object to that, but that's my scenario of what's going to happen if we alternate to the returns. So, objections, comments? Think I've exaggerated? Missed, missed the vote? Uh, well, yeah. what's, what's the difference, I guess, between like, conservatives and libertarians? Uh, one of the major differences, I think, is libertarians, to their great credit, like true liberals, have not endorsed all these wars we get into. Conservatives tend to you know, write the budget for the deficit, aren't wonderful, go off and fight, and uh, say very little about uh, what it's doing to our country to be constantly at war, not to mention what it's doing to our troops and to the civilians who take gas overseas. That's one major difference. Uh, they're also, uh, like I mentioned before, unwilling to buy into the true blue libertarian program because it does have some uh, you know, politically unpopular positions like decriminalize all drugs, uh, legalize prostitution. And that's what libertarians like. are for? Yeah, the, the, the true libertarians are. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to be said, actually, for decriminalizing drugs, I think, even though I'm not a libertarian. Uh, it's, 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 it's hard enough to get a decriminalization of marijuana. Did anybody see how the vote went in Washington State? Washington, Colorado. 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 Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Colorado legalized <laughs> it. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's amazing. The California tried like, to do it a few years back and narrowly lost, but I think people... Yeah, yeah they, they had the governor on, I think, CNN for an interview, and he was not pleased about it. He really? said, we've got a lot of work ahead because it's still illegal at the federal level. Yeah, obviously. there's that huge conflict. I do not understand why Obama, who in his campaign, yeah. first time around, said he would you know, welcome... Uh, there is suggested decriminalization of marijuana, and then he's been really nasty about enforcing even these uh, medical clinics that use marijuana. I mean, he's really coming after them. I don't know what's got, got so or who's advising on that. The, the judicial system and the police, the court, I think they have a lot of money invested in keeping drugs illegal because if you think about yeah. you know, that sustains their jobs. You in know, fact, keep marijuana and drugs illegal, it keeps the court system going, it keeps the, the police with the job. There's that problem. There's another problem is the marijuana growers in Northern Cal are very against legalizing because they'll be out of business, or at least less business, and they're making a fortune. Uh, yeah. Well, even people who aren't making a fortune, I mean, just small growers and people in like Humboldt County that have based their um, lives around 
marijuana, like they'll be knocked off. Oh, right. No, the people, they'll be hurting. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have a friend up in uh, Mendocino, and he said, if you're friends with a local um, grocery store or co-op or something, oftentimes they'll include in your, your gift package of groceries a nice little bag of marijuana. <laughs> extra nice thing. But, uh, um, yeah, they'll be devastated. But uh, some things uh, they have to pay a price for everything. But uh, uh, like I say, I think there's a lot of common ground and a lot of conservatives, even though I wouldn't admit it, between their position and libertarian on the basic economic thing. Um, again, I, I may be ignorant of uh, some good libertarian argument on why aren't they going after because they like the free market as well. But the free market, the way it's supposed to work in the economic textbooks, does not include monopolies and oligopolies like we're so dominated by. These huge corporations, agribusiness is terrible, and you know, there are four corporations control 80% of the food supply. It's absurd, that's not a free market. Um, maybe they have some good answers there. Admittedly, they're so powerful politically, the huge corporations, it's very hard to um, try to deregulate them. Reagan sort of gave up on uh, uh, any kind of uh, use of antitrust, and I haven't heard a presidential candidate since advocate for it. But uh, maybe someday we get back to that. Maybe it's just something we we have to approach differently. That they're too big to break up, and we have to do something else. I don't know. But uh, they're I think it depends on how the corporation get to be so big and so monopolistic. I mean, one route is, I guess, you could, if you're really big, to eliminate competition, you implement regu regulatory factors and sure. legislation. I mean, I think um, it's, it's the dark side of capitalism. I mean, I'm for capitalism as long as it's done right. But a dark side is, if you're a corporation in the capitalist system, you would love a monopoly because, it, you know, you don't have to worry about risk and you can yeah. charge what you want. Um, so there's this constant tendency, especially for large corporations, to get larger and control more of the market. Uh, the absurdity sometimes of, uh, like, the Obama administration did this huge bailout of Wall Street, and they took some of that money and bought other banks. They got bigger. I mean, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah, that's that's crazy. not a free market system when you're bailing no. out big corporations. Right. Um, now, I, I'd have to argue, though, there, that there may sometimes be good monopolies monopolies that arise based on um, consumers who are reaping benefits from the low price of the products that, you know, they're selling. But and if they're low, as if long they're... as they're not implementing any kind of laws or regulations to prohibit competition entering that marketplace, I see nothing wrong with a monopoly who's only benefiting consumers. But if they're what, what for profit, monopoly. sorry, go ahead. What industry can you think of that in, you know, is characterized by a monopoly where consumers enjoy low prices? I, I can't think of one. Walmart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Walmart actually doesn't have low prices. They just have one and then all the rest of them have Well, they, uh, they did before they got hit with predatory pricing back in the 90s. Um, what do you mean they, they priced their own brand lower, lower than the rest? They'll have like one brand that will show like at the beginning of the aisle it's like really low, but everything else is marketed like really all high. Right. And so you think that you're getting like super low prices for everything, but really only one, the cheaper, not good quality one, is the cheapest one. Yeah. Target actually has the lower prices now because of the price gouging hit that uh, Walmart took in the 90s. But they yeah. were on par of the lowest offering for food and groceries for uh, especially inundated areas that had no markets, but just had a lot of people with no food. Like in Louisiana, especially Walmart's like a big player. Um, mom and pop shops couldn't keep it for people who wanted it. So a lot of my family were in Walmart, and whether that's, you know, the, their condition is arguable, but uh, it would be, the life would be unmanageable otherwise, especially if you face a thing. So in some areas, like in California, where you've got a lot of people and there's a lot of competition, it's, it's easier to say, oh, well, screw you, Walmart, than like Trader Joe's. Because Trader Joe's has got good prices, almost up to Walmart, but the people who engage in those transactions are buying. Uh, have just as much dictation, uh, not dictation, they have enough authority to dictate um, what company is going to receive that monopoly by the buying. And if the government steps in, they, they give that power innately to them um, by, by cutting them. So 
you've got the consumers and the governments need to regulate them, and then the profit motive for the company that is doing it. Yeah. Uh, and you put those together in that, and you sometimes get a bastardized crony capitalism. Sometimes you get the consumer winning out, and then sometimes you get the banks, as for example, for example getting all of it. So what we're really looking for is, is to move the meters uh, so we can have our mixing console make the best sound of our economics rather than just having one factor be the, the side off for all of it. You, um, you could be big and not necessarily um, want to keep growing if you're a nonprofit, because the incentive to grow is the fact that you'll make more profits. And uh, so a for-profit corporation almost naturally wants to grow. But there are big organizations like Kaiser. Half of Kaiser is non-profit. The hospitals, the, the employee part, the doctors and nurses, I think is a poor profit part. But the hospitals don't, uh, they tend to be much less expensive than other competing hospitals like Sutter and Mercy and so on, because uh, they're non-profit. And there's no incentive to constantly uh, find ways of gouging people like growing. They're, they're quite efficient, in fact. Um, and there's a lot to be said for a, uh, a growing list of industries where nonprofits have a role to play. Uh, but uh, in the economy as a whole, they're a pretty small portion. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of where they might work best. But, uh, uh, the, the absurdity of uh, absurdities is the desperate city who, for money, sells off their water system to a private company. And surprise, surprise, they double the price of water. <laughs>